Hey guys, I'm Amy and this is my craft studio. I'm calling it Craft Adventure Studio. This is going to be, I hope, an informational video on using a drum carter. I'm making this video mostly to show um, friends and family. They know I've been doing this kind of stuff for a long time and uh, it's not something like your average person really knows about. So I thought I'd share the process of using a drum carter and I'll explain exactly what that is. So when I was doing the craft show in December, a lady came to me, one of the other vendors, and asked if I could spin some buffalo fiber from her buffalo. And I'm gonna put, I'll have all this I have a story already typed up and written out and you can just read that but uh, anyway this is me going to do the next step in the processing of that buffalo fluff she gave me and I have two gallon baggies full here's one of them so this is about half of her buffalo uh, well not half of an actual buffalo but this is half of what was left of the bag of fuzz um, and I picked out most of the nice stuff. I don't know if this will show you but there's a big clump. Uh, it's kind of messy. I usually wash my fiber and by fiber I mean like wool or alpaca or usually the animal fibers like that. Here's actually a bunch of wool that has been cleaned a little, but it's still got crud in it because it doesn't get everything out. Um, so instead of doing the washing first for this, uh, I'm afraid something that I tend to do is felt my fiber because I get impatient. So when I'm washing, I agitate it way too much and it gets all stuck together. So since Buffalo is a finer, quality of fiber, it's more susceptible to felting and if I felt it, it's going to be a pain to spin it. So I'm going to just see what happens if I just prepare it for spinning, spin it first and then wash it. So it's going to leave a lot of dirt and stuff and I think some dead bugs and such, but it should make the process a little easier. Uh, to get it into the yarn state, which is what the lady requested. So, um, since the buffalo fl fiber, you saw it was just like a little tiny poof. The fibers are like super short and fine. So what I'm going to do is I have this, uh, it's a milk chocolate brown alpaca right here. And I cleaned it a little bit a while ago. It's also not that clean because I gave up because it, it was a pain to clean. So this one will also shed lots of dirt and stuff. So what I'm going to do, I have a while ago, I already carded this into what is called a vat. And so I'm going to untie my thing here and show you what exactly that is. So I usually just roll these up and package them so they look nice. So this is starting to look a little ratty. But so I just folded it into thirds. So I fold the middle out and then fold this other out at the middle. And you get this, this sheet of fiber. And that's what, um, in theory, this buffalo and alpaca blend should be. So I'm not going to use too much of this because the lady really wanted it mostly, uh, her animal. And then she was going to do, she was going to knit with it herself and make a scarf or something. And it's like bugs have gotten into this one too. So that's not good, but we need, that means I need to use this up and stop having it languishing and sitting around. So that's, What's going to happen? We're going to take this and we're going to take this. We're just going to mix them together on this handy dandy drum carter. And I'll explain that in just a short while. Hey there. 
So this is my first real showy video. So I'm mostly making this up as I go along. I'm hoping that the lighting's gonna work and I hope that the volume will work and I hope you can actually see stuff and I hope this is going to be helpful. Um, yep. Okay, so first up, uh, I wanted to say that with this buffalo, after I got it in the bags, I stuck it in the freezer and I think I forgot about it. So it was in the freezer for like a week or so, uh, just in case there were live critters still in it. Uh, that should, they, they say that kills off eggs or the insects that are living in that. So both bags were in the freezer right next to my bread and frozen vegetables. Uh, all right, so this is my drum carter. It is a Strouch. It's by Strouch Fiber Equipment Company. So this is the Petite Drum Carter and it's very dangerous. See, I already have a Band-Aid because right here, down here, these are mostly all blades down here. Up here, these are metal teeth, which they're not blades, but they're kind of like staples, it's all with the staply sharp parts sticking up. So you have to be really careful. On the back, there are two wheels and there's a, a stretchy band that goes around those. And so when you turn the handle, it turns this drum, which turns the small wheel which drives the band and the band turns this larger wheel here and that spins, turns this part. And one goes this way, one goes that way. And so what I'm gonna do is you feed the fiber in here. You just let it there, keep your hands clear. See, it even says, use caution, keep hands clear. So that'll scoop that into there and it'll spin around here and then do kind of an S and then the teeth on here uh, are bent in such a way that they're gonna grab onto the fiber as it's stuck in these very sharp teeth. And then this is a packing brush, I believe. And I usually use it, you can adjust it so it's not there. This pushes the fiber down onto the drum just to make room so you can put more on there. I have it clamped to the table. There's a little clamp here. It doesn't work that great, but it might help because sometimes if you get too much fiber, you have to really carefully manhandle the thing. I don't know if that makes any sense. That doesn't make sense. But you have to get a little more assertive with it and it kind of scoots around. So let's see. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this. So the way that if I have a bat, and I'm getting ready to use some of it. I'm just going to pull a little strip off of here. So maybe we get that on camera. Okay, so we pull that off just as a strip. Real easy. So now I have a more manageable bit, manageable bit here. And that's the alpaca. So you can see that it's a lot longer. You know. It's longer this way. And then we'll get the buffalo. I haven't actually done this. I haven't spun this stuff yet. So this might end in tragedy. I don't know. I'm gonna pull some of this out. And you can see with the buffalo, it's really just, it's mostly just a poof. You can't really tell. See, it's not really that long or straight. Uh, and that's why I wanted to blend it with the alpaca, but I don't think I'll need tons of the alpaca. All right, so what we're gonna do, we'll start off when you have a finer fiber like the buffalo, it's sometimes easier if you sandwich it between, uh, you know, longer fiber, bulkier stuff, just because sometimes it won't, get grabbed very well here. 
So I don't, I actually don't know how this is going to go. So this is a learning experience for everybody. All right. So there's some of that. Let's stick a little of this on top. Not a lot. There we go. So there's a little fluffy sandwich. Turn the crank. Help it along a little bit. And then it starts to go. And I'll probably just pull all the alpaca off. And the buffalo. No, it's going okay. And then just spin. And spin. And it's starting to go. It is kind of clumping. So I might end up just processing this a couple times, do a couple rounds, a couple run throughs. Once I get the drum loaded up with all this stuff, then I'll uh, run it through again and that will help it blend more and uh, get more of the dirt out. There's mostly just sand in this and just dust. And I know with alpacas, when the way they get clean is they roll around in the dust. So a lot of the dirt in this stuff is just this brown dirt that it's all dry and dusty. So it's not real gross or anything. It's just, it's just messy. All right, so I'll just do this a few times and you can sit back and enjoy. And if I have anything exciting to share, I will share that. And if not, then I'll share the, the final product. Or actually, no, I will show you how you get this stuff off of here. Because that's always, that's kind of the question. And this stuff actually smells a lot like a farm right now. So it's, it's fresh, freshly barn scented. I think it's been sitting in a barn for a long time. All right, so the drum's pretty loaded up. I've started, the fuzz has started to get all clumped up in here uh, and not going on to the drum. So I'm going to clear that off and first move this out of the way. And then uh, you grab this pleasant implement here. And uh, if you can see, I had this set up so you can see right here is a groove in the, the break in the teeth on the drum. And I'm going to use this to loosen that up in little, just hook up a couple, like an inch or so, and carefully pull it up and pull it apart so you get a break. And then. I think there's several ways people do this, but I guess this is a main way is you just get these separated here and you get this part and you just pull it up gently, and pull it out and usually some stuff will get left behind, but we don't need to worry about that. Right now I just pull this so it's out of the way and hopefully most of it will come. Yeah, this is why I wanted to use the alpaca in it because if I do this, uh, some of the small bits might just get stuck in there and not wanting to come out. So like right here, pull that up. And since I'm going to do some more carding, I'm not really worried about what's getting left behind, even though it's a lot. Uh, because there will just be more that goes on here. And then in the end, I'll use another, I'll use this thing. This is another nice implement to get some of the stuff off. That's what all this wool was. This was all stuck on, on here that I had to clean off. So I did that to make room. And so the wool wouldn't get blended in here. So, pull this off as best I can, and there is a single little bat of the buffalo. It actually looks really nice with the 
alpaca blended in. It didn't add too much color, but it adds a little bit of, I don't know, depth or something to it. And it actually looked pretty nice. So I'm going to keep doing this. I've got to get through all of the bags. And just for this, I, this was a full bag and you can see how very little of it I use. It's still, it's still mostly full. So this goes a long way. Alright, I thought I'd just show you real quick the, one of the uses of this thing. Um, I think it's called a liquor and you, mine's getting kind of, mine's been used. I've run stuff through a bunch. You can see this nice pile right here. All that's gone through. I'm almost done with the first bag and it's starting to get real built up on the drum. So I'm going to use this to get it off of here and I just felt like showing that to you. So I'm just gonna, just gonna get rough with it. Pull it off here, gets all built up, and these don't pull off as nicely as that first one that I showed you. Right around here, a bunch built up. This scrape it off. It also gets it kind of messy, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to run everything through a second time and it'll still be messy but when it comes time to spin it won't really be that big of a deal. It'll all, it'll all work out in the end. There we go. I don't know if you can tell but there's some light colored fiber coming off of here and that is remnants of some wool that I had on here before. There's a little bit in here. And that's, that really can't be helped right now. It'll just get spun up with everything else and have a little bit of a white streak which hopefully a lady won't mind. It doesn't bother me at all. I usually like having other colors and textures and stuff it makes makes it more interesting so you can see this one's kind of a not all smooth like the other one and it kind of falling apart but that's okay it'll be fine all right here's one more thing I want to show you I have I've done one whole bag of the buffalo. I still have the other one to do. I've used probably a little more than half of the alpaca that I had and this is the pile that I got. This is what it ended up being. Um, and I've run these through a second time so everything's been blended twice. And then so the next thing I want to do since this is like a huge stack with my petite carter it makes fairly small bats. I like to put three together. I layer three like this. I don't know if I'll have room on my table to do this but I'll take three of these and I think there's three more. Well, maybe there's four. But for now I'm going to do these three and I like to just you squish them together, squish them and I stretch them and I make sure to grab all three layers when I'm doing this and I stretch them out um, not lengthwise because all the fibers are mostly going this way um, so that means all of the hairs they're going this way and I want to just stretch it this way to get more of a square so right now it's a, a kind of a thin rectangle and this way, um, I don't know, it just sits better and I can get it blended a little bit, just a little bit more and you blend 
three of them together together in case there's one that's like heavier with the alpaca or there's clumps and then you can get a more even or randomized uh, bit when you're going to go to spin it and I push and I spread apart trying not to get holes and it kind of happens so you can see it's kind of thin in places but it's it's okay just try and get it even across so now that's probably good it's not like a super thick pile anymore uh, and it's and it's a lot easier to store so now I can do um, the way I like to do where you just fold a third in and I'm just flatten it a little fold the other third in so one and then the other and then you have the middle part and you squish it together and the the hairs will cling somewhat and then grab the end one of the ends and just roll it and try to keep everything together and this is mostly just for like storage and making it look nice and then when I'm ready to do it I'll unroll and unfold and take the street strips off and there's a nice rolled up bat so I'll just put it right back in this bag so it won't try and pop back open it keeps it safe in one spot so that's that